Good morning YouTube, Loftus here. Popped up to Damrose again. Got a bit of a special for you. This is the 2023 Suzuki 1050 V-Strom. The standard, the one with the 19 inch rim, slightly lower, lower seat, lower altogether. Anyway, if you're interested in the 2023 V-Strom 1050, you stick around. Good morning YouTube, Loft is here, what do you reckon? The Suzuki V-Strom 1050, the standard one, not the DE. Looks lovely, doesn't it? Let's give it a go. How about that? Cracking dash. Smart start. Oh, lovely jubbly. I'll just wait for this silver card and we'll be away. Here we go. I do like the dash. I think Suzuki have got a winner there. This dash is superb. Anyway, first impressions. This bike is much lower, noticeably lower, than the 1050DE, which I took out the other week, the other one. Beautiful bike. There's far more leg room on the DE. The seat is much higher. This really does feel like I'm sitting in it. With quite a bent leg, not uncomfortable by a long way. It's very nice, but noticeably smaller. The geometry is quite good. You can't really tell the difference between the 21 and the 19. And as, as most of you probably know, this bike has been around in some guise for a long, long time. So second gear around the island. Sublime. I'll say one thing about adventure bikes. You can chuck them about, can't you? Look at that, absolutely sublime. So we're gonna go up the hill. Quick shift up. Quite smooth, quite friendly. Auto blip, similar, nice bike. Well, if Suzuki haven't sorted this by now, they never will. I must admit, I think this latest incarnation looks fabulous. Let's have a look. Good morning, YouTube. Loft is here. Look at this. What do you think? The brand new for 2023 1050, the V-Strom. This is the 19 inch rim one. It's basically the old one with a few small modifications. As I said when I reviewed the 1050 DE, I'm not sure which one you'll see first, but there's lots of small incremental um, additions, modifications that have just really turned the bike. I think this is an absolute beauty. The, I'm not a fan of black, you know I'm not a fan of black, but this absolutely pops the metallic in the black with the silver and the gold and the same colour on the wheels like a bronzy gold absolutely gorgeous this one's not so tall as the DE here we go I'm six foot five as you know 17 and a half stone I can flat foot it with a bent leg quite comfortable the um, the 1050 DE is just that little bit taller I'm nearly a straight leg on the 1050 DE but this is great isn't it what do you think let's put my legs up Look at that, loads of room, can move about, slide forward, shuffle back, nice big bike, big comfy bike, this would be a very good two up tourer, I like it a lot, let's have a close look. Alright so here we go then YouTube, what do you think? Love those wheels, just something about it, I just like this bike, semi retro, ultra modern, adjustable screen, it's got everything here. Come back round. Yeah, I do like this. It's got the the fixings on ready, so all you got to do is just drop your luggage on. Bingo, you're away. I like it. Let's have a closer look. So as I said, it's got the screen adjuster. It's the same one as on the earlier one. You just pull the knob. It's not very easy to do while you're riding along. In fact, I wouldn't recommend it. This bar on top is great for attaching your sat nav. Let's switch it on. It's 
it's the same generic dash that they're using across the Suzuki range now. I think it's an absolute stonking dash. I really, really like it. We've got a radial digital uh, tachometer, a big digital speedo. We've got a gear indicator, large fuel gauge, easy to read. Then along the top, we've got the time. And coming down, I'll press the mode button. So we've got traction control, three settings. We got modes A, B, and C for rain, and we've got ABS. I don't know whether you can switch it on or off. I haven't seemed to be able to work that one yet, but I'll leave it in number two, whatever that is. We've got all these little trips across the bottom. Everything's there: miles per gallon, temperature, air temperature, you name it. It's lovely, cracking. Just to the left here, we've got. Let's have a look. See if I can get it off. A USB-C, single USB-C. Okay, so coming out, same big genetic mirrors, same hand guards, lovely, can't fault them. Adjustable um, brake lever, smart start, hazards, that's your cruise activation. It appears you have to activate it every time you start it up. You don't just activate it and leave it like on most bikes. Hydraulic clutch, adjustable levers, we got the pass, high beam. So this is your mode button. You push the mode, you use the up and down to control the um, traction or the, the modes or the ABS. So not only does this work for your modes, it's also when the cruise control is activated, it's the up, the set and the up and down, the resume. Indicators, nice and easy to use. Or fairly good on. Let's use the old smart start and start it up. I love the smart start. So I'll give you a, this is what it sounds like from the cockpit. Let's have a look at the side and hear it. Here we are, big cannon launcher. Pretty throaty, isn't it? I've got to say, I like it. I like the colour of the engine. The new colour, not just a black engine or a silver engine. Let's kill it. Kill the ignition. It's good, isn't it? Let's get the stats and tell you the full story. Okay, so let's give it its full title. 2023 Suzuki V-Strom 1050. 19-inch rims, it's, uh, it's got everything. It's a lovely bike, isn't it? 1037cc, four-stroke liquid cooled. Double overhead camshaft with a 90-degree V-twin. This engine's been going for, well, donkeys. It started off... And the old SVs and before that. It's a lovely engine. It, it's so proven. It just works. It works well. It's got 106 brake horsepower at 8,500 revs and it's got 74 foot pounds at six. That's, that's really usable, that is, because up to 6,000 revs is where most people are riding and that's where you've got your grunt. Superb. Nice big 20 litre fuel tank. It's fairly heavy. It's 242 kilos wet. And it's got an 855 C tight, which is superb. Five, a six speed gearbox chain drive. It's got a lovely front mud guard that comes all the way down and protects the front pot. No need for a fender extender. Well done, Suzuki. You've fitted one on already. Perfect. So we've got 43 mil upside down telescopic forks. We're running a monoshock on the rear. I'll show you that in a sec. So what we got on the front, we got cast rims, a 110-80-19, Batlaxes, A41s or whatever they are, that seem pretty decent, can't fault them at all. We got twin 310mm discs with four piston radial Tokyos. Very, very nice. There's the shock in there, and we've got the remote preload adjuster. You can't see a lot. They've got a fairly decent affair for covering and protecting the shock. Well done. Centre stand included. Excellent. On the rear, 150-70-17, with a single 268mm disc with a one-piston Tokyo caliper. It's got everything in it. ABS, TFTs, LEDs, it's got a lot. They really have bought this bike, modernised it, bought it bang up to date. 
you could ride it, it would compete side, side, side by side with anything really. It's a lot cheaper than a GS. So colour schemes, there's blue, red, grey and black. And as you can see, the black looks fabulous. How much is it? It ain't bad, is it? This bike is 12,999 quid. So it's the sort of same sort of money as an NT 1100. The, um, the, uh, the cheaper version of the Africa Twin. Personally, if it was me, this or the cheaper Africa Twin, I think I would have this. That's my personal opinion. Don't get me wrong, when you get up to the adventure sport with the electronic suspension and everything, it moves, the, moves it on a little bit. But it's 19 grand, nearly 20 grand, so that's for the DCT. So really, you're talking of £13,000 bike. In this day and age, I think it's fabulous. So I'm going to get my hat on, give it a bit of thrash, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, you, YouTube, we're away. Anyway, I'm going to give a shout out now to Damrels. Damrels have been so good to me at Indian Queens. If you are interested in riding Suzuki's or Royal Enfields or Hondas or looking for a second hand bike, pop up to Damrels, see Mark or Simon, and they'll sort you out. They've got demos, all the bikes I ride are all on demo, so you can ride any of them and they're very good. I just thought I'd give you that. So we're going to go down the hill. Get it up to... Up to 50. Nice and steady, no messing about, no nonsense. Now the steering's very positive. It, you wouldn't really believe it had got a 19 inch in. They've developed this superb. It's very, very easy to steer. I'll just take one hand away. Look, you only need the slightest inputs into the bar and it goes exactly where you want it to go. Literally, look where you want to go and this bike will take you there. We're in A mode. We've got full traction on. We don't want to do nothing daft. And we're just cruising down the hill. How about this? Cracking bit of kit. So comfortable. It's it's the unsung hero, if you like. It's been around that long. People forget about it. And I don't know why. Because in some ways, it's better than the Africa Twin. Not every way, but some ways. And I think it's a really good, balanced all-round bike. As I say, I like the um, the 800, but I did prefer the 1050. And because I'm big, you get that little bit of extra grunt and poke out the 1050. There's not a vast amount of difference in power, 15, 20 brake if that, but there's a lot of difference in torque. And to be fair, these days on our roads, with camera vans everywhere, torque is what we're looking for and where it's at. We want as much torque as we can get. Nice easy pull away, here we go. We're in a 50. Yeah, nice and easy. Up to 50. We're going to be dropping down into a 30 any second. We're clear behind. I'll just drop a cog. We're in third gear. Just approaching the 30. There we are. I'm going to put it in B mode because it's slightly snatchy in A mode, especially at these lower revs. So all you do is throttle off, stick it in B, throttle back on and now you're in B. That, oh, that's much more comfortable. Yeah, that's a lot nicer. You don't always want to be on it all the time, do you? Sometimes you want to chill out a little bit. Once you get used to this uh, cruise control, it does work quite well. Uh, unlike a lot of bikes, you have to keep activating the cruise control. I don't know why, if you do something or switch it off, the cruise control goes off. Now, do you can see there's a little green dial with a set, because it's activated. 
and just here on the dashboard you have to push that to get the green dial up and then you have to get over this side and just press once set and then you can adjust your speed up or down with a little toggle there so I've set it at 29 mile an hour we're in a 30 no trouble at all look at this yeah the throttle's so much smoother in B mode just hold on we've got the bus coming I don't think there's quite as much whistle on this one as what there was on the other 1050 the DE but can you hear it can you hear that whistle the parallel twin just don't do it it's, it's rattly tappity whereas this you just get that bit of a whistle it goes away as you speed up the revs up to 3000 revs and it's gone you drop back down there it is <laughs> you'll be able to judge your speed by the uh, the whistle anyway i'm going to hold on here because we've got a lorry blocking both ways just give it a second so away we go this bar across the front here absolutely superb for mounting your sat nav too so you don't have to buy any extra kit just you um, you bracket your sat nav too and i've noticed there's a, a socket on the left whether it's for a cigarette lighter or a USB, I'm not quite sure, but so charging up your phone or whatever, dead simple. These are sorted, ain't they? These Suzuki's. I always think the build quality is quite good on the Suzuki's. The fit and finish is always decent. Yeah, I do like them, but you do have to, it's like any bike, you've got to keep them clean or else the fasteners go a bit dull. But I, like, I do like these 1050s. God, what's he doing? Obviously not using his mirrors, but he did stop, thank you very much. Just take it easy. They're out in force today. So here we go. See if we can get past the lorry, shall we? It's slowing up a bit. We've got enough road. Yeah, we've got plenty of road. Nothing about. Clear as a bell up to 60 past the quarry entrance fifth gear 60 mile an hour smooth as anything I'm getting a bit of wind blast but I don't really want to mess with the screen to be fair but I could put it up yeah I do like these tyres these A41s very nice good traction Good grip. Look at that, holding a nice line. Bit of breakage. Here we go. Let's test the slow speed out. Slow speed riding. Absolute doddle. You can go as slow as you want. Okay. Stick it in second. Third gear. I'm not sure how low the traction. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure how low a speed the um, cruise control will set at. But he did come on at 28 then. So which that's a good thing. The under one don't work below 30. So we're cruising through to Resco. 27 mile an hour. He's the dustbin man, busy boys and girls. We'll carry on up the hill. Get it up to 30. Okay, so we're approaching the national. I'm going to leave it in third gear, pull it back. Yeah, quite a good pickup. Drop it in. Yeah. Good ground clearance, no problem at all. So we'll slow it down a touch. Back brake. Okay, so we got a lot of pulsing, a little bit of skipping, 
but he kept it same direction he didn't squirm or jump, jump to the left or right so it's okay so here we go there's nothing about it again I'll just open up tractor on the right but he's um, he's busy working nobody in the junction here we go front brake yeah there's plenty there no problem at all them them Tokyo's them radio Tokyo superb so we'll come down the corner and drop down the hill here we go front and back I've got a little bit of a skid at the back a little bit of a skid whether it's because it loaded the front so much and just made the back light I don't know but it stopped ever so easy no problem at all so here we go past the parked car all clear drop it down into third gear little bit of brakes drop it in clear up to 60 we're in fourth yeah this is a nice point this is my old pal Aide Woods had one of these for a while and he's done a lot of touring on it, he raves about it and he was a BMW man before. Slow down for the bridge, yep, yeah, here we go. Fifth gear. Set it at 60. Here we go up the hill. Out to the right. Hold the line. Quite a lot of wind blast. Move over for the lorry. All cleared again. Slowly catching the car up. Yeah, that's good, that is. I'm finding it very comfortable. To be fair, it feels like I'm sitting on the NT. It's similar sort of ergonomics. Very, very nice. Never know, am I getting overtaking? I'm a little bit too close. Yeah, it's clear. Absolutely no problem at all. I think you could two or two up on this with boxes. I think it'd be a good bike. You know, everybody wants the big front wheel. And if you don't want the big front wheel, this is great. Okay, I'm going to just put the screen up. Give me one sec. Okay, it's that easy. Let the car go. So we've got the screen in the high position now. We're going to do a third gear roll on down the hill. Just nibble in behind him. Here we go, round the corner, we're doing about 40. Oh yeah, an easy peasy, loads and loads of power. Straight up to uh, national cruising speed. Yeah, it's a good bike this. Well, it's going to be in it, Suzuki have got it sorted. And they've kept it in the range, they've bought the parallel twin out for the 800s and they've, um, they've kept this 1050 V-twin going and, and I'm pleased they have really because I really like the, the engine. In some ways I think it's smoother than the, uh, the Africa twin engine. It's all the development I suppose. So, a bit of auto blip and again, yeah the auto blip's good. Works a treat, round the bend. All clear on the island. Here we go. It's ever so sure footed on these tight turns. Th what in second? Straight up to 70. Ah, it's got loads of grunt. No point going any quicker, we've proved it'll do it. It's better with the, high, the screen in the high position. I'm getting a lot less buffet in. Oh, it's quite good. Yeah, not bad at all. So there you have it. 1050 V Strom. 19 inch rims. Very, very tidy. Well done, Suzuki. I thought you were dead and buried. You've made a bit of a resurgence this season. Nice. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, I've enjoyed making it. So if you've enjoyed it, click on the like, subscribe, 
Ring that little bell. Ask me a question, anything you like. You know I'm only two, please. I'll say same again. Thank you, Simon, for lending me the bike. Damn rules. It's been great fun. We're just coming round, nice and steady. We're off the National into a 30. So, I'll say to all, this is the Lofty Biker saying, ta for now, ta -da.